In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a bleed layer to a print and cut project for when, it, when the image itself has a, a colored background or like a white background is not transparent. So, and this is something that you would use. I'm, I happen to use, a, I'm going to import a PNG file, but you would use the same process if you were bringing in a JPEG file, either drag and drop or a BMP file or something like that, um, because those always like are going to have a colored background. They're not going to have a transparent background. So I've brought in this bird and I can confirm that it has a, um, a, a white colored background because as I move it around I can't see the grid immediately around the bird so that tells me it is indeed a colored background so as I mentioned in the previous video anytime before you get ready to mess with an imported PNG just ungroup it object ungroup and then later you can regroup it now in this cut layer if I go to the preview thing just as I said when it's a uh, has a colored background you're just going to see a rectangle here so you don't want to cut a rectangle so we're going to take this cut layer and delete it. Then we take the print layer and we need to add the cut line that we want around the shape. So we go to the trace image window and I'm going to scroll down up here so I can look at it and it's perfect because I left it perfect when I was try when I was doing it before testing. If I didn't have blackout turned on, no, notice this, I would get all these little specks and the eyes are being traced and stuff and I don't want that. Now over here with monochrome, which is what you want when you're adding a cut line, I might have been able to get rid of that by messing with the contrast, but it's really just easier to just hit blackout and then verify that you're getting just the line that you want for the print and cut. Then I can click on OK. And now then I have my cut line and I have the print line and I'm going to rename this one cut. OK. Now the next thing is in order to get the, um, the particular bleed that I want, I need to make a shadow of this and I'm going to make it black because again this particular image, as are many of the clip art images you find, they're outlined in black. So that's the color I want for the uh, for the bleed line. And I'll be making a video on another day that shows you what to do if, for example, you have, uh, let's say there was no black outline and you wanted part of it to be purple and part of the line to be to be this color orange, there's a way to do that too. Um, so anyhow, so let's come back and turn on this cut line and I'm going to select it and I'm going to turn the fill to none because I don't really need it to have a color, a fill color. And then I'm going to go to, I'm going to make a copy of it. So let's go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place. So it's going to be exactly the same spot as the original. So now that I have the print line, which I'm going to kind of turn off right now and I've got these two cut lines so one of these cut lines I'll also turn off. Now that I've got the cut line and this cut line I'm going to use as the inside part of the bleed and then I'm going to make a shadow of it for the outside part. To do that I have it selected, I go to effects, shadow layer, and then I select the size of the shadow I want. And so let's say I wanted a sixteenth of an inch roughly, which is more than enough. And then just click on OK. Now then I have two. I have the cut line I sent and I have the shadow layer. And then the other two layers are still turned off. Now then I want to create, basically it's like a frame, what I call a frame, which is going to be taking the two of these and going to object merge. And so now then it just creates like this border sort of image that's going to be the bleed. Now then this border, I want to select it and I want to give it a fill color. So I select color and I have it set to black, which is the color that I want for the bleed. Okay. So now then I've got my bleed layer and I can double click this and call it bleed. Okay. I have the cut layer, which is just that thin line, and I have the print line. So this is basically how it's going to print, but then when it cuts, it's going to be just that, you know, that cut line that's more on the inside. Now it's important about the order. Now force it automatically puts the bleed at the top. If it didn't, then notice if I drag this down here, this is what I would see and what would print. Because the remember this print, this print layer still has this white box around it. So that's why it's important the bleed to be up here on top. Okay. Also this bleed layer, you don't want it to cut, right? Because otherwise it would cut twice, the inside and the outside because it's kind of a frame. So you don't want it to cut at all. So you need to come over to your cut line type on the style panel and change it from cut 
to print plus cut print. So it can only print. It will never cut. Your cut line is automatically set to cut. And you can leave it that way because it doesn't matter if it tries to print because it's basically behind this white layer any or behind the image layer. Um, well, actually, it's on top, but still the bleed layer you know, kind of dominates it. Or if you're not sure, you can change it to print plus cut cut, which means that it can only cut. It can't print. Okay, that's what's really nice about this menu is you can control exactly what you want to have happen. And then you've got your print layer. So now at this point, you're ready to just select all three and go to object, group, and then make your duplicates. Because again, when you're doing duplicates, if you don't have it already grouped, then you might end up with this bleed layer below your print layer, which is not what you want. It's very important to keep these in the order or at least make sure the bleed is on top of the print layer. Okay, and then I believe that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know.